Hey everybody, you Blonde Theft Auto here, and we're here with another Thursday game of choice, although this one wasn't much of a choice, because uh, I forgot to put out the poll again. Whoa! However, I do have an idea of what I'm wanting to do tonight. Let me make sure that this isn't too loud. Let me just stroll it down a little bit more. There we go. Alright, so... What I'm wanting to do today is show y'all this game called Flight Rising. And if you're already on this video, you probably already know what Flight Rising is. It is a uh, pet site about dragons, and it's awesome. Totally go check it out. Um, what I'm going to talk about today is Meyer Flyer Fodder Training. Now, I will get into the specifics of all those words. But, for right now, I'm just going to show you the very first thing, which is my dragon layer. I have six pages of dragons, almost full six pages. Now, you got to be thinking, holy shit, that's a lot of treasure. That's a lot of treasure to get all those pages. And the answer is, yeah, you're right. That's an upgrade. That's only five spaces. And so, I am showing you the best possible way to get money in this game, to get treasure, to get those upgrades. Now... I will say this, you only want to upgrade your lair when your flight has dominance because otherwise this would be about 95 more, 95,000 more treasure I think. And so like that helps. Like any little bit of money that you can save when you're getting these lair upgrades is fantastic because yes. So um. There is another way of getting treasure in this game that's fairly easy. If you go over to the fairgrounds and go to Glimmer and Gloom, I've heard that you can max this game out on hard mode in like half an hour, but uh, I get bored really, really easily with this game. Like, not that, whoops. I can go hard mode and I can get it done like really, really quickly, it just bores the hell out of me but let me finish it here and I will show you why it interests so many people now I mean I do have a tutorial that I like hand drew on grid paper of how to complete glimmer and gloom like that you get 1600 treasure per game now that adds up fairly quickly and you can definitely max this out if you really really want to. However, that's only 75,000 treasure. No, we gotta think big about when we go to get treasure. So, what you want to do is the first thing about Meyer Flyer Fodder training is you want to get fodder. Fodder are adult dragons that nobody wants to buy. So, there are two ways of getting fodder. Fodder, sorry. You can either uh, breed them yourself, or you can buy them off the auction house. Now, when you breed them yourself, I generally like have the hatchlings for sale at at least twelve thousand treasure up until day like five. Like, if they don't sell by then, nobody wants them to me at least. Uh, and if they sell at twelve thousand treasure, a I know they're not being used for fodder, and b I know it's usually going to go to a good home, and that the person really wanted the dragon. And see, I would get that much anyway ever, about around out of a fodder, like a trained adult that I normally do. I would get about twelve to 13,000 treasure. So I don't lose any money. Definitely go that route if you do. As for purchasing fodder, you want to go over to the auction house. You want to go to either your flight auction or your realm wide auction. Realm wide will usually have cheaper prices unless it's a dom battle, in which case definitely check out your flight. So I have a fodder tab saved and I will show you what this means. Okay, so when I go to buy fodder, I do it in treasure only because that helps me visualize, okay, hey. I spent this much treasure on this dragon, and yet I got this much more treasure out of it by training it up. Um, 
Let's see, there's another one. You want to make sure the age of the fodder that you're getting is a dragon. Uh, and then, yeah, that's all you really need to put in here to get your fodder. Now, usually, first price, this is a little bit high. Uh, you want to get, get around a 7,000 fodder. If you can get below that, that's fantastic and get it. <laughs> um, you never really want to get dragons with the low energy like this because A, you can't take it to the Colosseum until that bitch is fed. So, you gotta feed it. That's the downside. Um, okay, holy shit, these are pretty. Sorry, that, that's another thing I want to talk about, talk about. You have to beware of pretty fodder. Like, I cannot tell you how many dragons I have kept because they were just so pretty. I can actually probably name you a few here. Let me show you. So, like, ah, uh, da 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 da. He wasn't fodder. That, this one was fodder. He's really gorgeous. Um, let's see here. This one was fodder. He's also really pretty to me. Uh, there's at least eight spaces in my lair that are filled up by fodder that I have found really gorgeous and then just can't exalt because, oh my god, they're pretty. Like, I think there's even one in here that I even raised... Oh yeah, this one. I raised him up to level eight and then looked at him and was like, I can't, sh I can't. I gotta keep you. I gotta keep you. Hi, Matt. But... Yeah, you gotta really beware of pretty fodder. Because they will be the end of your lair space. Straight up. Now, you can get a fodder baby, which is, you know, fodder that is this low. But, okay, so when you get fodder babies, what you want to look for is you want to look for dragons, you know, at four days or five days, preferably five days. Because after the fifth day, they will grow up and become fodder. You just have to sacrifice a little bit of your food, like maybe one or two points. Um, so it's not a terribly bad investment. You just gotta wait a, like a day or two rather than the adults who are like ready to go right off the bat. Um, uh, when I go to look at fodder babies, I select hatchling, I select treasure only. Of course, I do the price range so that the amount of dragons I have to sift through is a lot less than normal. Um, and then you just gotta, like, hover over these dragons and see which ones are, like, five days. If you can get five days, that is the best possible one to do. Four days is alright, it's just, you know, like I said, we're waiting, which isn't ideal. Um, see, like, look, this one. Five days. 7,000. I could get this one right now. Actually, probably both of these, yeah. Both of these right now. And level them up. They'll be fantastic fodder. Um, you just have to really watch it and make sure you're not buying a five-hour-old fodder baby instead of, a. Uh, five day old fodder baby um but other than that it's the two ways you get fodder um so on to the next part of your Meyer flyer fodder training I already have two fodder these are two dragons that I bred myself and no one bought them so they're getting sent to the storm catcher for money so I have three er I have four dragons that are level 25, three of which have eliminates. So let's take a look at them. So this is my regular Kali party. This is the dragons that I have that are meant to hit hard and stay alive for the most part. Or no, actually these are ones just meant to hit hard. Um, these are ones that I would use like trying to grind, um, grind apparel or eggs or like things other than fodder training because these are ones that'll you know hit hard enough that I don't have to worry about anything. As for my Meyer Flyer, this is my Meyer Flyer Dragon. Um, these are her ability stones. Now the main ones you really want to do with stones 
is the scratch, the shred, the eliminate, the rally. Some people put sap here just to keep from using like those uh, health potions, but it doesn't bother me to use them when I need them. You want to have three berserker stones and you want to have two ambush stones. Now, this particular fodder, or sh this particular dragon is the 119 Mire Flyer build, which means that they're able to one shot anything in the mire. However, it gets hit by something that's awake too. It really gets hit and it dies very quickly. So, if you're wanting something that'll take a hit a little bit harder, go for the 117 build and put more points into vitality. I just prefer this build because it gets it done quicker to me. So let us get some fodder up in here. So let's get these two up in here. Okay, now let the order in which you have your dragons really doesn't matter because this one's gonna go first anyway. Um, yeah, it really doesn't matter. I like to have her on top because it seems like they hit her less there. I need to actually try her on the bottom because like I've heard people say on the bottom they get hit less. So let's try it on the bottom. Um, so then you would go into your battle here. Okay. And another thing about your Mire Flyer. I have heard that the type of dragon that your flyer is is mildly important. Like mine's a fire type, which is great against plague, nature, and something else, but weak against shadow mainly, shadow and earth. And so there's only one shadow enemy in here and one earth enemy in here. The only one I really have to worry about is the earth enemy or the shadow one if I'm like low on breath. Um, if you wanna, you know, check that out, make sure you're typing for your Meyer Flyer and try to determine which one you think would be best. Um, if you get one that was like majorly weak against water, that would help because the only water enemy in the Meyer is a boss and you don't fight those with your Meyer Flyer, so go for it. Um, <coughs> sorry. Um, so there are two types of enemies in the mire. There's physical attackers and there's magical attackers. Excuse me. So all three of these are magical attackers. And this is actually a really good start to one. If you could get one that was only two enemies, that would be even better. Do not go for a start that has either three Scythe Kamitachis or a boss or four enemies because you will die like 100% you're gonna die so um, what you do is you can either rally or scratch I like to do scratch because like you just gotta scratch it up the whole way through that way you built up this breath and I'm dealing critical hits which is fantastic cuz Okay, once you get 35, you can then eliminate it up. And see, I even got a familiar from that one. Ta-da! Now see, look at this. One battle got me to level 3. If I do one more battle, I'll be at level 4. If I do two more battles, I'll be at level 5. I personally like to get at level 8 when I train fodder because it gives me 12 to 13,000 treasure per fodder. If I train two at a time, that's like 20,000 treasure. Now, for a regular battle, you want to rally your Mire Flyer and you can just start one-shotting these guys. It's like really simple. Now, if, uh, one way I know about gaining breath, you only want to do it against magical attackers. That is your key. So I can scratch right now, and then eliminate. If I did another scratch, it wouldn't have killed it. So you do scratch eliminate on the second turn. You can only really do it on these like magical attackers. Now, there are a handful of physical attackers and, and it's mostly magic attackers with this. 
So the physical attackers in the mire are the Scythe Kama Itachi, the South Marsh Poted, the Venomous Toradei, the Poisonous Toradei, the Shellian, and the Sickle Kimitachi. The magic attackers are the Wetland Unicorn, the Sal Kama Itachi, the Psyworm, the Mossy Suradei, the Brilliant Psyworm, the Heart Red Croaker, the Mistwalker Shellian, the Black Wing Croaker, and the Common Poted. Those are all ones that you can do the Scratch Eliminate thing I was talking about. However, you cannot do the Scratch Eliminate thing with the Salve Kamehameha and the Psyworm. And if I get a turn here with them, I will show you why. Shit, I didn't mean to do that. When you do that, you just have to go double eliminate on the second one. I know I do it a lot when I get distracted. But um, with the Salve Kamehameha and the Psyworm, they have, like, a lot of speed. So instead of, you know, being like... Hang on. Let me get rid of a couple of these. Let me show you. Instead of being this two-turn thing here, it would be one turn and then the Sal Kamatachi and then another turn. So it would get a hit on you. So you just have to sh do a straight eliminate at that point. Um... The only kind of uh, enemy that I have to personally worry about in the mire is the, um, I think it's the Venomous Toradei because I believe that one is the Earth one. If it gets enough breath to, if it gets enough breath to like kill me, like, or enough breath to hit me with a ground uh, earth attack, I'm usually dead. Like, hands down, it takes most of my health. Okay, now when you're faced with these two uh, magical attackers and then the one physical attacker, go for the physical attacker first. And then you can take out the other one. See uh, how this turn order has done? I don't have two turns simultaneously. It's one turn, and then the Kama Itachis go, and then the other turn. And sometimes they'll attack you on that turn. And that happens sometimes. So you just kind of have to go scratch it up as best you can and hope it won't hit you. If you get contused, you have to make sure that you have scratched it at least once. Even if you are rallied. Oh, cool. Uh, this is not ideal. But I think that'll help. Yeah. Um, so some good and bad about the mire other than, you know, trading, training fodder really quickly. Because I used to do my fodder training with two level 25s and only one fodder in the ghost light ruins. And it took considerably longer than what I'm doing now. Um, you get a lot of plants and a lot of seafood. And... I can't tell you how much that annoys me because I don't have dragons that eat plants or seafood very much. So, that's okay. Um, I get a lot of stones. I get a lot of familiars that I can melt down in Baldwins. I get a lot of just things. Uh, I've gotten actually like three eggs since I started doing the Meyer Flyer thing, which has been fantastic, let me tell you. Um, however, you do not get an eliminate. I prefer training to level eight because I get, you know, twelve to thirteen thousand treasure, which is just a nice, a nice tre tre uh, treasure trove for me. Like, I like I like level eight because like I sell my dragons at level, or I sell my dragons to about around twelve to thirteen thousand. And so if I train them up to level 8, I don't lose anything, per se. Um, I feel like level 8 is a good stopping point because level 9 takes quite a while to get to. Sometimes I'm tired and so I only go to level 7. That gets me 11 to 12,000, which isn't terribly bad, but like, I don't know. I find 12 to 13,000 a nice number to sell. And I did that again. Whoops. Um, 
another thing about this is for a lot of people this can get really grindy and really boring really really quickly so you gotta find ways to make it not boring either watch videos and uh, in another screen or if you only have one monitor double click double right click on a video YouTube video to do picture in picture and that will make it stick up which is awesome uh, you can listen to music or you can do these drop challenges like find a way to make it fun for you otherwise you're gonna hate doing this and you're not gonna get the money um, yeah a lot of people Oh yeah, the picture in picture thing is something I recently found out. Uh, let me see if I can show you guys really quick, because that's actually kind of awesome. Let me pause this really quick. Uh, okay. Let me pull it over here so you don't see real quick. So... I'm just, well, it's got an ad, of course. Go away, ad. I don't want you. And I have to sit through a 15 minute, 15 second ad, because of course I do. I've started. Okay, so, not affiliated with this, this dude in any way. Right click, picture in picture, sticks, I close out of this. It's still there. I can extend it very high or I can have it really tiny in the corner. I like to have it about, you know, yay. And even if I'm doing stuff, like I can be con like training fodder at this second and have it playing, it won't go away. It's the best thing ever. Um, that's a really good way to train fodder, by the way. If you're, like, wanting to watch videos, but, oh no, my screen is filled up with fodder training. I hate fodder training because I want to watch videos. Now you don't have to. Um, I've heard a lot of people will only go to level 6. Um, I just feel like it's easy enough to get to level 7, and then once I get to level 7, I'm just like, oh, it's so easy just to get to level 8. Um, Yeah. Uh, I know I do a lot of drop challenges, but for fodder training, that usually isn't the best way to go unless you're like Meyer specific, that kind of thing. Um, simply because, like, for instance, the big drop, drop, uh, excuse me, the big drop collie challenge that I'm doing right now, I am stuck in the scorched forest and have been for two months. But yeah, like, uh, in terms of training the level six, yeah. I mean, like, another thing that helps you get into the rhythm of these things is to have this keyboard thing, like the keyboard controls, because it's literally A, E, or, well, I usually do the rally mouse click, but A, S, click, A, S, click. And then it just, like, you get into the rhythm of it. And so it becomes, like, background noise almost. That's where the music and the videos come into play is you're focused on something else and you only have to, you know, sort of the, in the back of your mind, oh, that's a magic user. I just gotta go with it. Um, yeah. Um, is there anything else that you guys want um me to answer about this or <coughs> actually i will show you what happens if i get a boss here in a minute and if not i will show you what happens any what i do anyway shoot okay you gotta scratch it no and then you gotta see that's what happens you have to really, really watch it when it comes to, like, getting contused. Where, um, that's actually, yeah, when you go to reload, you click that, it takes you right back to the main Coliseum screen. That's what you do for bosses with a Meyer player, because you don't, you're not gonna live. You're not. You're really not. Um. 
I when I first started doing the Coliseum stuff, I did solely mouse clicks, and I got really bored really quickly because it took so much time and I wasn't getting anywhere. So the mouse keyboard, like the double mouse and keyboard controls, it is definitely where it's at because that's just what I have found works the easiest and does the best. Now sometimes you will run into this like little weird situation where you, you know, you're up against magic users, but you had to scratch them to get up your breath. And this was a w wonderful RNG. Jesus, good God. Um. But yeah, this is the only other boss that I have to worry about in the mire, because my fire type dragon is weak to that shadow magic. Cause yeah, go away, Windows. Um, yeah. Um, if there's anything else that you guys would be interested in hearing me talk about, please let me know. I know this is usually um, a lot shorter than my normal Thursday game of choice videos, but that is because it's a tutorial. Um. I don't know, man, like, this is a fan dragon, and, like, when I was doing it, it was, like, I was, like, okay, lore-wise, she's the head of my, uh, like, guard, so she's gonna have my only eliminate, and then, like, I didn't realize until way later how much of a mistake that was, because, like, she was only level 11, and it was just the worst. <laughs> Um, uh, eliminates are really, really hard to get, but once you make that initial investment, your life will be so much easier. Um, if you do not have a dragon with an eliminate, I would suggest renting one or, like, buying a dragon with an eliminate, like, once you get that eliminate, your fodder training will be so much faster and it will get substantially faster than if you were just using a level 25 with scratch or whatever. Um, see, I have no idea about the Sedona build. Um, I have no idea what it is. What I did for an Eliminate is I looked around on Tumblr for dragons that had an Eliminate, and I ended up getting... Um, a really old dragon, actually. Like, she is my second oldest in my lair. Um, I can finish this later. She is the, like, second oldest in my lair. And is the only, uh, was the first dragon I ever had with an Eliminate. Everyone thought she looked terrible. I thought she looked really pretty. I got her at, like, like, 200,000 treasure or something. Something like that, anyway. And, like, you just really gotta look. Look for deals, look for dragons that, like, may not be pretty, but they have an Eliminate. Go for it. Um, you can also look up the Sedona build, because I have heard of it before. I just, I already had an Eliminate by the time I heard of it. Or by the time I was aware of it. Um, I mean, yeah, just like, like I said, whatever makes you not hate fodder trading and like make it go to the back of your mind kind of like just like mindless grinding if you can that is the way to go when you go to do Meyer flyer fodder trading um yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial it will be up on youtube eventually i promise um, if you guys would like to, um, vote on which game I play next Thursday, check out my Discord. I will have a poll, I swear, by early morning Thursday, and it will close at 8 p.m. EST. Um, if you want to watch this on YouTube, the link for that is down in the description. Um, 
Make sure to follow on here if you want to see me go live next time. And I will talk to y'all later. Goodbye.